Alright, welcome to part 2 of my ZMR250 build video. In this part we're going to install the FPV gear. So that's the video camera, the transmitter. We're going to rearrange a few things. We're going to solder everything up, wire it together, and then put it all back together. So uh, just to kind of go over the components here, uh, we're going to start with the camera. I went ahead with the 600 TVL Sony camera. Obviously a NTS C system is what you're going to want to use. Um, for the transmitter, I went with the Skyzone T5823. It's the 5.8 gigahertz mini transmitter. Pretty affordable. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I bought it. It was pretty cheap as opposed to some of the other ones. So here is the antenna, and this is the basic layout. The antenna will connect to the video transmitter, then these wires. Um, will connect to the video transmitter which will then connect to the video camera you don't need any of those other wires that come with the video transmitter so here's the Sony camera this is really all you need out of that entire box is just the camera and those wires here are the goggles that I decided to go with the Skyzone 02 goggles these are the uh, 3D FPV goggles. Um, these are the newest goggles out. Um, heard good things about these goggles. I decided to go with these instead of the Fat Sharks. So uh, excited to get this box open and uh, see what's inside. So here is the goggle case. It comes in this nice black case with a zipper. Uh, we're going to go ahead and open this up, see what's inside. And immediately these two antennas almost fall out of the pouch. That's okay. We'll just put those off to the side. And we've got our basic instructions, which you know are going to help us out big time. We've got a ton of cables, bunch of cords. Looks like two more antennas. Two for the goggles, two for the transmitter for the 3D camera. And we've got just our audio-visual cables, a uh, bunch of other cables if you wanted to hook up external monitors and stuff like that. Um, I know that this version has head tracking, which I won't be setting up, but uh, I don't know what this little metal piece is. This is something uh, it looks like maybe a stand or a hook of some sort. Bunch of cables. Uh, we, we really won't be needing any of these for what we're doing. These goggles are compatible with uh, the camera that we have, so um, here are the head tracking cables right here. Put those off to the side and let's see is there anything else in there uh, one more cable and let's see I think that's it that's it yep oh just a little uh, foam pad looks like it goes to this hook uh, I have no idea what this goes to but that's okay um, let's just put that off to the side so here is the video transmitter this is what's gonna go uh, on the quad and provide that 3D video signal. So let's see, this is the camera and we've got two cameras there and what a lot of people do is they stack these on top of each other just to save space. Um, they fit nicely right on top of the quad and uh, it's as simple as that really. So here are the goggles. Um, these things look great. Wow. Um, obviously it's got an adjustable rubber band type strap for your head for fits all size got a nice rubber molding we've got uh, buttons on the top here to control it. we've got our antennas and our external camera just uh, all the plugs on the bottom side for a small USB and a SD card we've also got our head tracking plugs and S video out so these things look great so I'm gonna power these goggles using this nanotech 0.95 lipo battery and you can see it has a JST cable on the on the end of it so what I did I bought this adapter it's a JST adapter and uh, it just made my life simple I'm just gonna basically plug that JST cable into the adapter plug then the adapter plug is gonna plug right into the goggles and that's how I'm going to power up the goggles so you can see here uh, this plug just fits right in this is just a standard size plug and boom, I'll, I have now have power. I'll probably put this battery somewhere in this strap and just uh, fix it to the strap and that's it. I'm good to go. So I'm going to actually add a little bit of epoxy. You could use hot glue as well onto the back of this camera because there's a little transistor that apparently will break over time and then your screen will go black while you're flying. So use a little bit of hot glue or epoxy 
to hold that down. So I'm just going to take a little bit here on a nail and kind of dab it on this transistor. You can see that metal silver transistor there. Nice and easy. Get a little bit of epoxy right in between the space there because I don't want those wires to break on that little transistor. So you can see I've got that nicely epoxied up. Now with the video transmitter we're going to have to use a knife to cut open the heat shrink here because it's blocking the plug so let's go ahead and just cut that open with an exacto knife. We also need to cut the heat shrink away from the channel switches. This is so we can select what channel um, we want to be running our system on. I, I don't know what the default is but you want to make sure that you change it to something or else everyone's going to be flying on the same channel and you're not going to be able to see your video feed. I'm just going to use a little bit of double sided uh, foam tape and essentially tape this to the underside of this plate in front of me. I've actually upgraded my antennas to these uh, aftermarket antennas. I just wanted to see how they work compared to the black uh, rubber duck antennas. And you can see that they just kind of screw on just like that. Now you want to make sure that you place the antenna on the video transmitter before you place it onto the plate. That way you know how far away from the edge to place the video transmitter. Once it's in place, just you know, hold it down. Once that's in place, you can remove the video tr the antenna. And we're going to take these wires here, and we're just going to separate them so that we can get ready to solder them all together. So just separate all these wires, the red, the black, the yellow, the white, and another black wire, which is for sound, but we don't need that. So we're just going to cut these wires, this plug right off the video camera wires. And we're going to separate these wires as well so that we can solder them to the transmitter wires. So just go ahead and solder the red to the red, all the reds together. And we're going to solder the yellow to the yellow, the black to the black, and all the black wires will be soldered together. I'm now soldering um, another black wire that I'm going to use as my negative lead to my power distribution board. So we'll need a positive lead to our power distribution board and a negative lead which will then work into these wires here. So all the reds get soldered together, all the blacks get soldered together, yellow to yellow, and that's it. So now you can see here I use these leftover banana clips from my ESCs. Uh, this is so I can just kind of plug and play my video camera system and I can unplug it and provide power this way instead of everything kind of hardwired and soldered together. Um, so these two wires are actually going to be soldered to my power distribution board. On the camera itself uh, we're going to need to break away these borders here so we can just take some pliers and we can just gently break away uh, this border here because the camera will be too big. It won't fit in between the two pieces of the frame if we don't break these pieces away off the camera. So we're gonna kinda break this border off and just separate that with these pliers. Now be careful because we don't want to break the actual holes where the screws will go so just be careful here and break this border away just like this. It should snap right off no problem. And once I've done that, I'm just going to file down the edges a little bit because they're a little rough and uh, I just want them to be nice and smooth. Okay, so I have some uh, metal screws and some rubber grommets here. Um, you don't need these, but I'm using these uh, just as a little experiment here. So you could use these screws that I'm using here or you could use uh, nylon standoffs to stand the camera off from that board uh, just to connect it to the board basically so I'm using these uh, these kind of vibration dampening grommets um, 
not sure if they're going to actually make a difference or not, but just wanted to try these out. So again, not necessary, uh, but however you connect this board to this camera uh, is fine. It'll work just fine. So go ahead and connect the camera to this piece of the frame, um, which should be in your frame box still. You see here I have to uh, kind of scrunch everything together to get those screws in there, and I'm just going to put those bolts on right now. And that's going to hold it in place, and it. And you might be wondering, well, where are the bolts for the bottom? Well, I, I, I want to be able to tilt my camera just slightly, so I'm only going to be putting these uh, screws and bolts on the top two holes. So you can see here that the camera will slightly tilt just a little bit. Okay, so now you can see here on the back of the board, uh, this plug here plugs into the plug on the side, and that big plug should be on the bottom. That's the bottom of the board. So that, that should just plug right in, that should snap right in, and again, that, that larger plug is the bottom. Now, and see, now I can just plug and play uh, my camera, and I can just use those banana clips, plug it straight into the power distribution board, and I now have power to my whole system. Now as a quick side note, you want to make sure that your camera and your transmitter all are running on the same voltage. So here I have a 5 volt to 12 volt camera and I'm running 12 volts to it from my power distribution board. So everything should work fine because my transmitter also can accept 12 volts. So you just want to make sure that the voltage is the same on all those components or else you might run into problems. So just a quick side note there. So these wires here you can just kind of tuck around to the side and here we go. I've got everything connected and I just want to point one thing out. I had to file down these edges here because this didn't fit into the top piece of the frame maybe because it's just a cheap Chinese frame uh, so I just had to file that stuff down so it fit better. Uh, so just just watch out for that if you have to do that. If it doesn't fit, you might need to just file it down like I did. So the camera now that I filed it down will snap into place just fine. There are some holes on the frame and it just snaps right into there. And you can see here I actually moved my receiver to the underside of my top plate and I'm just gonna apply that there and now the antennas are going to be coming through the top plate and I'm going to use this zip tie here to uh, hold my antennas in place to give them a little bit more stability so I'm going to just zip tie uh, a zip tie to the frame on either side and then basically what I'm going to do is take the antenna and a piece of heat shrink and put the heat shrink over the zip tie and the antenna to hold those two things together and then I'll use uh, my heat gun to activate the heat shrink and kinda hold everything in place. So once you get the heat shrink on there um, again this is so nothing gets caught in the propellers and uh, your antennas will stay straight up in the air and just give you the best reception so just go ahead and you can see I'm just going to use my heat gun and just activate that heat shrink and kind of basically just hold everything in place and now you can see my antennas instead of flopping around they have much more stability to them and uh, they shouldn't get caught in any propellers or anything. So now that we have everything put back together we can just put the top plate on, screw that in, screw in our uh, antenna there for the back for the video transmitter and we are good to go and that's it we're done. So that's it, that's part two of my ZMR250 racing drone build video. I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a ton of fun building this thing. Uh, please watch part three because I've made a ton of changes and I want to go over those changes with you uh, because they're, they're really improvements on the, this build and uh, I think you would find them super beneficial. So make sure to watch part three of my 250 ZMR racing drone build video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.